All right, so I was just here a few weeks ago for engine week, but I'm back at Viking Aircraft Engines in Edgewater, Florida, as they just made an announcement on social media about a 150 horsepower option they're offering now. So let's dive right into it. Jan, so tell us why you have an abundance of engines in your shop here. Did, was was uh, Santa really good to you this Christmas, or did he really fill up the sled, his sleigh for you this year, or what? I don't know. I mean, considering we we uh, do this for the for the love of sport aviation, I guess it's kind of a Christmas present to to anyone that uh, want to fly behind or in front of a Honda engine. Um, we, we were able to get uh, 25 of the 2020 uh, HRV Honda engines, uh, brand new. They've been obviously been in cars, but they're brand new, no mileage or anything like that. And, and here they are. And uh, now we're going to make them into airplane engines similar to the uh, 130 that we already have and the 195. And the, so the difference being, of course, this is 150 horsepower. and. As you can see, brand new, shiny, uh, new in the box. All right, so I was just here a few months ago, and there was no mention of this. Is this something that's been in the works, or you just decided overnight, hey, let's come up with a 150 horsepower engine, what's out there, and you happen to find a lot of yeah. 150 horsepower engines? Um, this particular engine's actually been around for a long time. It's the 1.8 liter that was initially in the Civic for many years, and then Obviously, it gradually got improved upon. Uh, it was like a Z1, Z2, and now we're up to like a Z9 as far as the engine nomenclature. But um, it made sense for us, you know. We had 130 horsepower. We had 195. There's kind of a gap in there. And we have the technology in this shop. Uh, we Actually, we have all the parts in this shop to very quickly make an in-between model. We have a gearbox that's already strong enough we have the wire loom that already fits with a, with a few little tweaks. We have, in fact, this engine's somewhat similar to our Viking 110 that we uh, left behind a few years ago uh, in the sense that it's a port injected engine. Uh, the wire loom that went on that engine actually fits on this, except this engine's a little higher tech with a few extra sensors and a variable intake manifold. Um, but that's how it came about. We were kind of talking about it. You know, it would be nice to have an engine right in between the two that we have now, hence the 150. Okay, so other than um, a few more horsepower, and as you mentioned, this is port injected versus direct injected. Is there anything else that's a little bit different about this and also discuss maybe the weight differences? Okay, um, it's, it's very similar in weight. In fact, you know, we've weighed them uh, the way they come in the door and we're also weighted the way it's going to leave our shop as an airplane engine and you, you figure on a, about another five pounds over the 130 but that's not it's not something really bad you know considering you're gaining a considerable amount of horsepower so i think the the horsepower the weight to horsepower ratio or the gain is very minuscule i think the same engines that we now or the same airplanes that we now sell engines to can also use this engine. You know, like for instance, our favorite airplanes are, are the Zenith type of airplanes. And the 650, the 601 XL, the 750 stall, the cruiser, those can all use, you know, they could always use our 130 horsepower. And, and this engine is very similar in layout and weight and a little bit more power. And sure, you could use this engine as well. 
Hey everyone, let me take just a moment here to thank our sponsors that make all of this possible. Great companies like Airworks, AirTech Coatings, Clemens Insurance Agency, Whelan Aerospace Technologies. So take a moment after this video to say hello to all of them and remember to check out the affiliate links in the description below. And remember, just build it. Let's get back to it. Now, as far as the differences between, like technically speaking, this engine and the 130, like you mentioned, Brian, it's a, it's a, a port injected engine. Um, doesn't have the high pressure pump on it, which as far as efficiency, you really can't beat the direct injection. Um, I think the bigger displacement going from a 1.5 to a 1.8 as far as the power is going to give us that extra power but fuel efficiency this engine technically would be just a tad uh, worse you know that's kind of a it's not even really true because airplanes use a lot of power we we cruise at 75 plus percent all the time at lower power setting a direct inject the engine is very efficient uh, but once you get up into the higher power setting fuel is fuel and you're not going to see a big difference uh, we will have to tune this engine slightly different than the direct injection because port injection is not quite as good at uh, keeping detonation out of the engine so we'd have to run slightly less ignition timing using good fuel in the engine and all that but those are minor things i think people are going to be happy with this engine honda and um kind of like the crowd the the uh, younger generation than me now that are souping up their civics and stuff and getting a lot of power sometimes up to a thousand horsepower and all this kind of stuff they tend to lean towards uh an engine not for this particular 1.8 but this engine has a feature that's unique and that is below the uh, cast block of the engine there's a little sandwich plate and it's bolted to the bottom and then the oil pan is bolted to the bottom of it and this is a an invention that Honda came out with years ago and it's the only engine that we have in our lineup that has this it is a structural member to the bottom end of the engine so all the bearing caps that you would normally find in, uh, in many engines that are just kind of like stuck on the bottom of the connecting rod and there's a couple of bolts holding them. Uh, those are integrated in a structural cast web on this engine that's a separate tray almost that goes up. And because of that additional uh, rigidity of the bottom end of the engine, we're expecting this engine to last a very long time. So Jan, uh, talk to us about the operating RPMs of this engine compared to the 130 and maybe compared to what Honda uses in a car versus what you plan to spec it out for an airplane. Now with this engine, we're going to utilize uh, something that modern engines, particularly not necessarily just Honda anymore. You look in Toyota, you look in Hyundai, you look in Honda, they're all revving the engines at high RPM. <clears throat> of course, the term high RPM is very relative. Uh, it sounds high for those that have been, you know, used to driving big V8s in, in, in America here, uh, in the older cars, and uh, it might sound relatively high for some people. Then, of course, now the, we've introduced in this our sport other engines that are, you know, snowmobile-derived engines that have 11 to 12,000 RPM. So the whole thing about RPM, obviously, is very relative. Um, this particular engine, we will take the horsepower out of it at a higher RPM than the 130 because the engine is designed for to be a high revving engine. We're not looking for like low end torque like we were able to do with the 130. We're looking for an engine and we're allowing the engine to spool up to the RPM that it needs to be able to produce the horsepower that we want from this model. So, you know, uh, we were taking off at like 5200 sometimes 5,000 with the 130 and we still are. This engine, we're gonna rev it up and we're gonna allow it to just spool up to the RPM that Rotax is kind of famous for using in their, in their little engines, which is the 5,800. So we're gonna go right to 5,800 for takeoff and then cruising will be, uh, you know, four to 500 RPM below that. Of course, if you're doing sightseeing and in your 750 Zenith, uh, you can go down like 3,500 RPM, but if, there should be no worries about using RPM in this engine. Uh, you want to cruise at 5400? Cruise at 5400.
Right, Jan, so I, I know for a fact that uh, because of the videos you made, you actually put your, your butt in the seat and fly behind your engines. Yep. This hasn't flown yet, so what is the plan to get this into the first airframe and what does your test platform look like? Okay, of course, it, there's no such thing as an, an easy transformation from a car engine to an airplane engine. Now, we've made it as easy as possible by leaving the engines upright, using all the sensors on the engine, and, and so forth and so on. And of course, we have a lot of experience at what we do. Like I said earlier, we, we have a smaller engine, we have a bigger engine. So, as far as making this happen, is very, very easy for us because we have everything we need right here. Um, as far as the first flight and how this is going to be tested, uh, one thing that happened at the national stall down in Lakeland that we, we just went to was the enthusiasm that we saw in one particular individual, our friend Steve. Um, and we never thought that, that he would be even remotely interested in doing any kind of stall competition type of flying. Now, he owns a, a Zenit 750 and the airframe is too small for our turbo engine unless you want to put a couple of pounds of weight in the tail and we don't recommend it it's too big of an engine the 130 uh, is a perfect engine for that airframe but it is not a competition engine it's not something you're going to go and win a stall competition in you're going to do really well but if you've seen those airplanes they take off in 10 feet 20 feet 30 feet so you need something really really special for that and uh, Steve was kind of asking us, um, you know, you guys have like something like 150 horse? That would be perfect for my plane. And we had already thought about it at that point. Um, we were a little reserved about even telling him that we were working on it because we, we don't like to, you know, tell somebody what we're doing before we have flown it and tested it. In this, in this case, we both agreed at the company that that was okay because of what I said earlier, it's such a close thing to what we've already know how to do. Um, Steve will be here next month. Uh, one of these engines uh, is, is, be, is his, it's, uh, it's being built, it's uh, on a mount. It's going to be uh, dyno tested in the next week here. And um, then we'll mount that on Steve. He will remove his 110 engine because he wants more power. He wants to have fun with the stall guys and the competition. And then I will, uh, I will take it and fly it and we'll build some hours on it and, and it's going to be a fun time. All right, so the other half of the, the business here, yeah. if you could tell us for 2021, um, what oh. is the price point for each of your models, including your, your new model? Sure. Um, I guess we'll start uh, lowest to highest. Um, we have our 90 horsepower engine, which a lot of people know to go on some of the smaller aircraft from 701s to a Rans S12 to a Sonics is kind of the normal platforms that we have those on right now. And the engine itself is $10,000. Obviously, firewall forward can vary, um, but the engine is $10,000. Um, our 130 horsepower engine is um, probably our most popular engine to date. The 150 is uh, kind of already working its way up there it, because it did fill a great niche, but it's uh, $11,000 for the 130 horsepower. And then the 150 uh, is another step up at 15,500. And then our turbo engine, which is the 195 horsepower turbocharged, um, that's the one we have in our Super Duty, and it is 18,500. So the firewall forward components can vary quite a bit. Um, although, especially for the Zenith, uh, the firewall forward components between the 130 and the 150 have stayed almost identical. Um, if anything, they've simplified a little bit more. So the price point on firewall forwards is pretty standard across whichever airplane. And it would be that the average typical? An average typical invoice <laughs> of like 130 horsepower with the whole kit and caboodle, um, propeller, spinner, even your coolant and stuff that goes inside and your fuel system, the, the whole thing. Um, it's a very inclusive package, winds up being about $20,000. So that's pretty complete, $20,000 out the door and uh, you got yourself an airplane engine. And what, obviously this is a, a new platform, you're gonna be testing it, installing it in another month or so, mm -hmm. but obviously you've got stock. What, yeah. what are the lead times for any of your engines at the well, moment? Well, we don't expect to ship any of the 150s, obviously, until we have tested and we kind of have everything clean, clean lined, all the prototype pieces are already scheduled to be here within the next week. So we're just kind of waiting for those moments and all of it to fall into place for us to finish. So a lot of it is prep work right now. Um, so probably the 
beginning of March, end of March, we'll start looking at kind of sealing the deal on a, on a timeline as far as shipping, but nothing should be any later than March with the 150. Um, as far as everything else, we have less than a week lead time. So the 150, we're just a little reserved about letting leave the shop right now. Um, we would, we want to fly it first. We want to make sure everything is kosher before it leaves out the door. Thanks for giving us a quick tour here uh, of the update of your engines. And we'll have to come back again in, in February and, and catch you flying. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. I think uh, I'm kind of visioning um, getting this done, have a production engine on Steve's airplane, and the first flight being like the last flight. I think there'll be very little tinkering on this engine, very little as far as upgrades or changes. It should be one right out of the uh, right out of the gate that'll be a success. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. I invite you right now to like and subscribe. Hit all those notification buttons. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.